I don't understand. Come back when you're sober, eh? <laughs> Talk to you guys later. Servus. Ugly, ugly chopping accident. He really got carried away with a promotion. And, um... Nice couple. Seriously. I think she... This guy's really enjoying his food. Look at him go! I think she'd... My name is Buzz. I'm happy for you, son. What? What? Okay. How do you like this inn? It's pretty good, considering it's the only one. That makes sense. Um, nothing? All right then. What? So... Yes, what? Hmm, where was I? How should I know, son? What? Never mind. Bye! What? Bye! This stuff looks like it's extra powerful. Better be careful with it. It's the ticket for the trip from Bucharest to here. Neat little souvenir. It's, uh, well, it's trash. I mostly picked it up to spite Kitty. Evening! Oh, it's you again. What is it? See you around. I think she'd better lay... A quite voluminous guy unlit pipe in his mouth. I kinda like this guy. Nice hat. Hey, 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 hey. Greetings, my skinny friend. Oh my, hey, hey there. Good to meet someone friendly. <laughs> Have you been talking to these grams around here? Uh, don't judge them too harshly. That's standard foreigner procedure. Standard procedure? This must be a cultural barrier thing. I'm baffled. I am afraid it's not for me to explain. So let's just leave it at that. So, what is it you wanted to talk to me about, Sonny? Have you seen a foreign girl around here? Goes by the name of Peace. I uh, don't have that kind of information, friend. That's something you should ask of Istvan and Rodika, the innkeepers. Why is everyone, except for you, so unfriendly? I uh, don't have that kind of information, friend. My name's Buzz, Buzz Kerwin. Luca, the coachman, at your service. How's the coach business going, Luca? It really depends on where you want to go. It's been several days now that we have no GPS signal. Strange times indeed. You need GPS for your coach? Well, again, it depends on where you want to go. Some places are very difficult to access even to an experimented couchman like me. So, me and Rosie have to relay on technology. You know? But everything is so traditional around here. Ah, uh, don't let appearances fool you. We have some of the fastest internet in the world. 
friend. It just sort of went away locally, along with the GPS signal. Just went away? You didn't look into it? Everyone who was good at computers moved away years ago, said Lee. Tech support should be on its way. Unfortunately, with no GPS and the treacherous terrain, plus this weather, who knows when they'll arrive. Oh, that really sucks. So I'm not getting any GSM service either. I'm afraid not. Oh, heavens, how I miss my 4G. What if I told you I'm tech support? Well, uh, you'd make Luca a very happy man. See, my love life... <sighs> Yes? <sighs> Why am I about to pour my heart out to a stranger? Because I'm incredibly well versed in matters of the heart. Oh, look my friend. See that beautiful waitress over there. Her name's Anna. The prettiest name in the world. Just listen to it. Anna. Anna. Luca is so in love with her. Uh, sorry, but what does this have to do with the GPS and internet being down? Well, this isn't the Middle Ages, Buzz. I can't just walk up and talk to her like some troglodyte. You can't? <laughs> no, no, no. Of course not. Not in this digital day and age. Oh, I can't rest until I see which way she swipes for me on garlic. Is that some kind of a dating app? The best there is in Transylvania. Well, what if she's just not into you? Oh. Luca will just look for another girl, I guess. But I need to know first. Can't make any moves before that. Huh, that's a very mature way to see things. Nice. Eh, life is too short to cry over spilled milk, friend. <laughs> Plenty of pretty girls in Transylvania. Don't you worry about that. I just hope she doesn't fall for that hipster Vasile. With his trimmed beard and his fancy haircut. Huh? What if I go ask her for you? What is this? Fourth grade in the 18th century? Huh? I'd be left out of the inn. <sighs> nice pipe. Thanks. <laughs> Tell you the truth, I haven't smoked in 24 years, but I feel it gives me some facial balance. <laughs> okay. What are you eating there, Luca? Oh, just had my mamaliga. But I'm afraid it's all gone. Do you think I could have the little cauldron? I'll bring it back. Well, uh, sure. As long as Rodica doesn't notice. Help yourself. <laughs> Luca, help me out with this Tsuika thing. No, 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 thank you. Got to keep a clear head when steering the couch. <laughs> I meant, do you have any idea what I can do so it doesn't hit me like a freight train? Um, I remember reading about that on a forum recently. But my memory isn't what it used to be. 
If only the internet was working. See you later, Luca. Talk to you soon, Buzz. Evening. Oh, it's you again. What is it? See you. One of a series of dark and mysterious doors. I can sort of hear muffled voices from behind it. Should I be eavesdropping on these people though? Is that ethical in any way on my part? So you have a dark and mysterious door. It's not against the law, is it? I mean, I don't know anything about Transylvanian law, but I think it's legal, right? I'd bet. I am the one who knocks. Uh, come to think of it, I'd better not. Transylvania. Well, it sort of reads the same. Why is the Y missing and not other letters, though? Hmm. I'm trying to only ask her to do stuff in case it's really important. Hmm, a conspicuous ornate gate with an intense red glow emanating from behind it. Did you swallow a thesaurus while I was asleep? Pray remain unobtrusive, feline. There is a sculpture of a bird above it. A raven or a crow, I think. Things are definitely bird-themed. I'm not letting her squeeze in there. Stop right there, little chicklet. What's your business with the Corvins? Uh, are you talking to me, ma'am? Why, yes. Yes, I am, sweetheart. You are trying that door over there, and it's for me to decide who goes or doesn't go through it. I just got really curious. Such an interesting door. Why, yes. Yes, it is very interesting. What business have you with the Corvins? Okay, I lied. I just need to go in to follow that cable there. Trying to restore the internet and the GPS to the place, you know, doing some good. Oh, so you're with the people that come fiddle with the cables every once in a while? Exactly. Well, they all know the answer, so tell me this. How many pieces did Corvin's heart break into? Who's this Corvin guy you keep mentioning? Don't play dumb with me, Chicklet. Shoo now, shoo! I'm not really sure I understand what's going on here. You can't grasp the concept of password protected entry? Don't they have internet where you came from, Chicklet? They do, it's just really, really slow. Talk about really, really slow. Hey! You do realize I'm male, right? Age and gender and race mean nothing. You're all chicklets to me. Well, I guess that's sort of nice. I seem to have forgotten my password. Any suggestions on how to proceed? There's always the password recovery system, Chicklet. Oh, cool. How do I access that? Ah, Lord knows where he is right now. It's a he? Yes, that's my husband. You won. He could be anywhere right now, but he's probably hanging around the inn, like always. How do I recognize your husband? Big silly black hat. 
and the bigger and sillier white moustache. Thanks. Why can't you be the password recovery system? Does your wife do everything around the house while you just uh, lie around? I don't have a wife. Doesn't surprise me. Hey! Can I go in now? As soon as you tell me the number of pieces Corvin's heart broke into. I'll get back to you on that. I'm here about the password recovery. What? What's that? I forgot my username and password. You what? Um, I mean, I forgot my password. Oh, all right. Well, do you have the letter? Letter? What letter? The Y. What? What? No, I'm afraid I don't. Come back when you have it, Sonny. Got a scoop. What? All right then. Okay, this should stop it from burning my fingertips. Wait, what do you think you're doing? What? I'm... I need this bulb. My folks are from around these parts. Oh, sure. Silly me. Why don't you grab the statue while you're at it? Hey, I'll, I'll bring it back, okay? I, I need this. For such a goody two-shoes, you sure do borrow things a lot. Shut up, cat. A single solitary lit window. Who's in there and why? Why am I even asking these questions? Well, someone's in there. Doesn't make any kind of difference to us or our quest, but there it is. No reason to have. Nah, let's just leave whoever that is alone. Don Imagos. Artist, creator, director, actor, visionary, modern-day Viking. Brought important contributions to the art of indie game making to Transylvania from the distant lands of the New World. Looks like a motivated dude. Also, he's holding a controller. That's pretty cool in my book. Good to have you aboard, Don. Huh, says here in tiny script that if you listen closely, you will hear Don a lot. Huh. Star Mazer for the win. Okay, I, I like this guy. Shut up, I just do. Thank you for your contributions in the field of indie game making, Don Imagos. We salute you. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Oh no, not another tourist info point. Thankfully, this one seems to be abandoned. Apparently, they were pragmatic and just gave up. I won't... I've had enough of tourist information stuff for a while. Oh man, what a neat looking balcony. I'd love to have one just like that. It looks like it's part of the ancient city walls. Even better. She doesn't need to go up there. It's not mine to use, though I'd love it to be.
This is your brain on walls. This whole mural thing above the archway just makes no sense for me. It must be a cultural barrier thing. No reason to have her climb up. I wouldn't know how to use Huh, a heart-shaped mural. It's got like a circle in the middle and... Uh, yeah, I have no idea what this is. The heart is right next to that faded portrait, as is the brain. What does that mean? It's a withered portrait of a man with a fiercely intense stare. There's... There's something about him, something strange but familiar. I can't put my finger on it, but I feel like I know this guy. Well, not no, no. Like I've seen his face before, but where? Man, this is really frustrating. Who the heck does he remind me of? Friend? A neighbor? Someone in my family? Huh. Who cares? Stop dwelling on it. I really feel drawn, drawn to it. A spotlight that's supposed to be lighting that heart thing on the wall, I think. It's not working. No light bulb. I don't think it's busted, it just needs a light bulb. She's pretty bright, but... Perfectly functional. Could you please not say that? Perfectly functional light bulb seeking healthy compatible socket. Could you Perfectly fun Could you And it fits. Nice. Symmetry, I am really into you. This lady is really interested in that mural up there. She has this air about her. The air of someone who knows stuff. I think I'll do the talking. Hi there, I couldn't help but notice you're examining that mural up there. Pardon me? Oh yes, indeed I am, yes. Can you tell me anything about it? Why, of course. You see, there is a certain ambiguity in regard to the vivacious and decidedly histrionic undertones of the disjunctive perturbation present within the artist's essentially transitional brushwork. Wouldn't you say? Uh... Of course, you must not let this hint of over-specificity on my part overshadow the obviously resonant spatial relationships between the reductive quality of the lines and the commitment to a rigorously formal approach on the artist's behalf. <laughs> Actually, what you must understand is that the work echoes its own edges with its obsequious interior dialogue, and even replicates itself, paradoxically denying any allusion to a juxtaposed mythopoetical reality. Yeah, but what does it all mean? Aren't you paying attention, young man? It signifies that the structuralist paradigm under which the creator diligently operated is flush with interpolated post-dialectic musings that cannot be rightfully ignored. Uh, that's oversimplifying it a bit, but yeah, okay. What is the significance of the divided heart? It is clearly a corollary of the coronary metaphors which permeate the opacity and quintessential divergence of pervasive aesthetic hierarchies in the artist's oeuvre. Uh, I agree. What can you tell me about this bus ticket? An incisive voyagerial metaphor, rectangularly encased in an obviously sarcastic homage to utter futility and cavalcading materialism. What do you think of this cauldron? An unrelentingly piercing allusion to corporeal gastronomic enslavement. 
in the almost puritanical form of a hemisphere, wrought of sacrosanct hunger, both telluric and spiritual. You nailed it on the head. I have this pocket full of trash. Ah, ah, such a puckish postmodernist cliché turned anti-cliché, or, as some would put it, mudful reversed boilerplate. Not an entirely surprising denouement coming from a distinguishably inexperienced dabbler in the arts, but one I uncontemptuously applaud nonetheless. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just trash, really. Precisely. Wink wink, as they say. What do you think of the solvent? Are you by any chance employing terraceous earthly chemistry as a means of subsuming the, uh, the inextricable anthropologic dissolution into a pan-expressive, if mechanistic, allegory of human suffering and decay? I sure am. Bitchin! I'll leave you to your critique. Indeed, indeed. I think it's this kid's slingshot just lying in the grass. Hmm, could I use this? Nah, I can... That's a cool slingshot you got there, kid. Yes, isn't it crazy that I know about more than just computer screens and video games? Mind-blowing, I know. Aw, oh, come on. Mind if I take a look at it? Yeah. Cause I'm just giving my deadly slingshot away to a stranger, sure. Isn't it cooler and more realistic than a video game? I don't know, but it can realistically take your eye out. So which of these two is worse, you tell me? Well, if you put it that way... I made it way too deadly. The world's not ready for it. Right. That thing does not look deadly. It's only made from the toughest wood you'll find around these parts and a virtually unbreakable rubber band. And I've used industrial grade glue to put the thing together. Not only is it deadly, it's indestructible. <laughs> I'll bet I can take it apart, easy. <laughs> really, dude? You're on. What are we wagering? Just the satisfaction of being right and in the other guy's face, kid. <laughs> okay then, it's on. <laughs> so, what are you playing? Call of Beauty 6. I thought shooters sucked on mobile. <sighs> Call of Beauty is not a first-person shooter. It's a survival game. Survival game? Really? Yeah, really. You role-play this supermodel, and every once in a while, you have to survive on no food before a show for like three or four days. That's terrible! Games have changed since your days, old man. Everything is realistic now. Disturbingly so. Nice place, this town. Nothing ever happens here, and I can't even get data on my phone anymore. But yeah, great place. Well, if you looked up from that screen every once in a while, you'd see that it is. Oh, jeez, you're one of those, aren't you? We get it. You grew up hitting a ball against the wall, not glued to the screen. You were so much better off. Thanks for the insight. Bye. Well, no, that's, uh, that's not really what I meant. I was a nerd just like you! Oh yeah, you're totally hip to geekdom and down with the youth, pups. Have you seen a girl called Peace around? No, I haven't. Cause I'm one of those losers who won't look up from their screens at the real world. Right? <sighs> Later! Uh-huh.